Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 1 to 10 for the iSucker CISOM exam. Let's begin. An information security risk analysis best assists an organization in ensuring that the correct answer is B. Cost effective decisions are made with regard to which assets need protection. An information security risk analysis helps an organization identify and prioritize risks to its assets weighing the likelihood and impact of threats against the cost of controls. This ensures that security measures are implemented where they provide the greatest value, protecting the most critical assets in a cost-effective manner. Essentially, it aligns security spending with business risk priorities. Why the other options are incorrect? A. The infrastructure has the appropriate level of access control. Access control is a result of implementing specific security measures not the primary goal of a risk analysis. Risk analysis may recommend access control improvements, but it doesn't ensure they are implemented. C. An appropriate level of funding is applied to security processes. While risk analysis can influence funding decisions, its purpose is to assess and prioritize risks, not to directly determine budgets. D. The organization implements appropriate security technologies. Technology selection is a response to risk assessment findings, not the goal of the analysis itself. The analysis focuses on understanding risks, not choosing technologies. Therefore, the correct answer is B. In a multinational organization, local security regulations should be implemented over global security policy because The correct answer is D. Requirements of local regulations take precedence. Local laws and regulations override global policies because legal compliance is mandatory within each jurisdiction. If a global security policy conflicts with a country's specific regulatory requirements, the organization must follow the local regulation to avoid penalties, legal issues, or loss of operating licenses. Global policies should serve as a framework but allow for regional adjustments to maintain compliance. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Business objectives are defined by local business unit managers. Business objectives do not determine compliance obligations. Legal requirements take precedence over managerial preferences or operational goals. B. Deploying awareness of local regulations is more practical than of global policy. Awareness and practicality are secondary concerns. The main reason local regulations prevail is due to legal necessity, not ease of implementation. C. Global security policies include unnecessary controls for local businesses. Even if true in some cases, this is not the reason local regulations override global policy. The key factor is legal compliance, not control optimization. Therefore, the correct answer is D. To gain a clear understanding of the impact that a new regulatory requirement will have on an organization's information security controls, an information security manager should first the correct answer is D. Perform a gap analysis. A gap analysis is the first step to understand how new regulatory requirements affect existing information security controls. It compares current controls and practices against the new regulatory requirements to identify what is missing or needs to be changed. This provides a clear picture of compliance gaps before moving on to risk assessment or cost evaluation. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Conduct a cost-benefit analysis. A cost-benefit analysis is done after identifying what changes are needed. You can't evaluate costs or benefits until you know which gaps exist. B. Conduct a risk assessment. A risk assessment helps evaluate threats and vulnerabilities, but it doesn't directly measure compliance with new regulations. The gap analysis must come first to determine what needs to be assessed. C. Interview senior management. While management input is important for strategic decisions, interviews alone won't review how current controls align with the new regulatory requirements. Therefore, the correct answer is D. When management changes the enterprise business strategy, which of the following processes should be used to evaluate the existing information security controls as well as to select new information security controls? The correct answer is... D. Risk Management When an organization's business strategy changes, the risk environment also changes. New assets, threats, or compliance requirements may emerge. 
Risk management is the proper process to evaluate whether existing information security controls remain effective and to determine if new controls are needed. It ensures that security measures stay aligned with the organization's updated objectives and risk appetite. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Access control management. This focuses only on managing user access rights, not on evaluating or selecting overall security controls in response to business changes. B. Change management. This handles operational or technical changes to ensure they are implemented safely. It doesn't assess control effectiveness from a risk perspective. C. Configuration management. This ensures system configurations are maintained consistently and securely, but does not evaluate strategic control adequacy or risk alignment. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Which of the following is the best way to build a risk-aware culture? The correct answer is D. Establish incentives and a channel for staff to report risks. A risk-aware culture is built when employees are actively engaged in identifying and communicating potential risks. Providing incentives encourages participation, while having a clear reporting channel ensures that employees can easily and safely share risk-related information. This creates an environment where everyone feels responsible for managing risk, not just the security team. Why did the options are incorrect? A. Periodically change risk awareness messages. Changing messages can keep communication fresh, but doesn't necessarily build engagement or accountability. It's a supporting activity, not the main driver of a risk-aware culture. B. Ensure that threats are communicated organization-wide in a timely manner. Timely communication is important, but it's one way. A risk-aware culture requires two-way interaction, where employees can also report and discuss risks. C. Periodically test compliance with security controls and post results. Testing compliance measures control effectiveness, not cultural awareness. It focuses on adherence, not on building proactive risk recognition and reporting behaviors. Therefore, the correct answer is D. What would be an information security manager's best recommendation upon learning that an existing contract with a third party does not clearly identify requirements for safeguarding the organization's critical data? The correct answer is C. Create an addendum to the existing contract. If a third-party contract lacks clear data protection requirements, the best course of action is to formally update the contract by adding an addendum that defines the necessary security, privacy, and compliance obligations. This ensures both parties are legally bound to safeguard the organization's critical data without disrupting the existing business relationship. Why did the options are incorrect? A. Cancel the outsourcing contract. This is a drastic measure and should only be considered if the provider refuses to implement proper safeguards. The goal is to fix the issue first through contractual clarification. B. Transfer the risk to the provider. You cannot transfer accountability without clear contractual terms. Risk transfer only occurs after explicit clauses are added to the contract. D. Initiate an external audit of the provider's data center. An audit can verify compliance but won't fix the lack of contractual obligations. Without contract clauses, the provider isn't legally required to address audit findings. Therefore, the correct answer is C. An organization has purchased a security information and event management tool. Which of the following is most important to consider before implementation? The correct answer is... A. Controls to be monitored. Before implementing a SIEM, it's most important to identify which security controls, systems, and events the tool will monitor. Defining this scope ensures that the SIEM is properly configured to collect meaningful logs, correlate events effectively, and support incident detection and compliance goals. Without clear monitoring objectives, even the best SIEM setup can produce excessive noise or miss critical alerts. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Reporting capabilities. While useful, reports are only as valuable as the data being collected. You must first determine what to monitor before evaluating reporting needs. C. The contract with the SIEM vendor. Contract terms are important for procurement and support but are not the key technical consideration before deployment. D. Available technical support. Technical support matters during and after implementation but it doesn't influence the initial effectiveness of the SIEM configuration. Therefore, the correct answer is A. 
which of the following is most likely to be included in an enterprise security policy? The correct answer is A. Definitions of Responsibilities An enterprise security policy is a high-level document that defines the organization's overall security objectives, principles, and responsibilities. It assigns accountability, specifying who is responsible for protecting information assets. This establishes the foundation for all other detailed policies, standards, and procedures. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Retention schedules. These belong in data retention or records management policies, which are lower level and more specific than the enterprise security policy. C. System access specifications. Access specifications are defined in access control policies or technical standards, not in high-level enterprise policies. D. Organizational risk. Risks are identified and documented during risk assessments, not within the enterprise security policy itself. The ESP focuses on governance and direction, not risk listings. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Which of the following should an information security manager do first when a legacy application is not compliant with a regulatory requirement but the business unit does not have the budget for remediation? The correct answer is D. Assess the consequences of non-compliance against the cost of remediation. The first step is to assess the impact, understand what the regulatory non-compliance means for the organization in terms of legal, financial, and reputational risk, and compare it to the cost of remediation. This assessment provides management with the necessary information to make an informed decision on whether to remediate, seek an exception, or accept the risk. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Develop a business case for funding remediation efforts. A business case can only be created after assessing the consequences and determining the risk level. You need that analysis first to justify funding. B. Advise senior management to accept the risk of non-compliance. Risk acceptance is a management decision, but recommending it before understanding the full impact would be premature. C. Notify legal and internal audit of the non-compliant legacy application. Notification can be necessary later, but the immediate priority is to understand and quantify the non-compliance risk before escalating or taking action. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Which of the following is the most effective way to address an organization's security concerns during contract negotiations with a third party? The correct answer is C. Ensure security is involved in the procurement process. The most effective way to address security concerns during contract negotiations is to involve the information security team early in the procurement process. This allows security requirements such as data protection clauses, access controls, and incident response obligations to be built directly into the contract before it is signed, ensuring that both legal and operational safeguards are in place from the start. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Review the third-party contract the organization's legal department. Legal review ensures compliance and liability coverage, but without security input, key technical and procedural controls may be missing from the contract. B. Communicate security policy with the third-party vendor. Simply sharing the security policy doesn't guarantee the vendor will adhere to it or that the contract will enforce it. D. Conduct an information security audit on the third-party vendor. Audits are useful after a contract is in place to verify compliance, not during negotiations when requirements should be defined and agreed on. Therefore, the correct answer is C. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.